In this episode, Ubuntu Multi-Touch, Chrome Web Store, and Microsoft Flight Simulator. Quicksurf Internet Media presents The Geekinator, talking about all things tech and geek. Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Phoenix, Arizona, here in Studio C1 at Quicksurf Internet Media. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Please head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for Season 3, Episode 18. From CNETnews.com, there's a story here, uh, Intel's Sandy Bridge to use new specialized silicon. Uh, this is the new processor architecture that Intel releases every two years. This one uh, is the next microarchitecture that uh, Intel is going to release, and it's going to include new circuits for handling demanding multimedia tasks. Um, for example, converting a video file from one format to another, which actually happens all the time uh, when you go to convert. You know, when you pull a video off of a camera, if you have a newer AVC HD camera, editing AVC HD is extremely processor intensive, and a lot of times it's easier and faster to convert it to uh, a less intensive uh, encoding before you do anything with it. And so, uh, It'll be nice to actually have that built into the CPU itself running at clock speed as opposed to having code do that. So it's pretty neat stuff. Uh, by all means, check out the article. A lot of cool stuff going into the next uh, processor microarchitecture, which is uh, supposed to be due out the end of this year, uh, January 2011. So it'll be pretty neat stuff. Let's go ahead and talk about our sponsor for this episode, GoToAssist Express. There are a variety of tools that let you remotely support a client, colleague, or friend. But the only one I trust and rely on is GoToAssist Express, the best remote support tool designed for small to medium-sized businesses, and it's brought to you by Citrix. Why GoToAssist Express? Well, it has exceptional performance, it's very easy to use, and it's secure. IT professionals, really anybody who doesn't have time to squander with a tool that's slow or unreliable will appreciate GoToAssist Express. With GoToAssist Express, you have no IT maintenance or updating. It's so fast you'll be on the other computer troubleshooting or giving a tutorial in seconds. And it's consistently reliable. My audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash techpodcast. I repeat, my audience can try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, visit gotoassist.com slash Tech Podcast. From Electronista, there's a story here. New error correction chip promises to shrink flash memory. And actually, that's a good thing because we're going to start seeing SSD drives that are, have even more capacity because they can shove more memory into that 2.5-inch form factor. A new chip created by startup Lyric Semiconductor promises to shrink flash memory and provide new methods for spam filtering or other processes. The technology utilizes probability processing to solve certain problems that can benefit from determining the probability of bits being zero or one. Lyric's LEC chips, LEC, uh, are designed with new gates, architecture and language dedicated solely to processing probabilities. So uh, they're basically, it performs the same basic function as current error co correcting chips, which you have to have for flash memory but the form factor of that logic is 30 times smaller than what we currently have. So there's a significant gain that can be had by using this newer error correction chip. Um, so uh, it'll be interesting to see uh, how quickly this makes it into you know, mainstream use, but uh, still pretty neat stuff. From Engadget, HPO is heading to the iPad and mobile devices in six months, but they're still cold on Netflix, according to the uh, title of the story here. There is value in exclusivity. Consumers are willing to pay a premium for high-quality exclusive content. This is something to HBO co-president Eric Kessler's words that ring true with his company's goals, and unfortunately for Netflix enthusiasts, that subscription service isn't part and parcel with his philosophy. Interesting. Uh, so 
But what is interesting is Netflix, or uh, not Netflix, HBO is looking to bring their content to the iPad and other mobile devices here in the next six months or so, which is a huge boon. That'll be pretty neat. Um, I'm curious to see how they implement it, if they just have one player and you have you know, all the content in one player, or if they do it how uh, some content providers do, where you have to buy you know, an, basically an app for each piece of content, which would really suck but uh we'll see how uh how hpo implements it and and you know what the quality is and all that so it'll be pretty neat to to play around with from gizmodo there's a story here ubuntu users will be touching tapping and sliding with impending update this is pretty neat uh, multi-touch is landing in ubuntu's upcoming 10.10 .10 release with a particular eye on unity the netbook optimized flavor of the popular linux distribution the new features are expected to eventually appear eventually support a variety of touch devices including apple's magic trackpad so this is pretty cool they have a diagram up of uh what it's you know all the different things it'll uh, support uh, so check it out i'm i'm looking forward to trying this out uh, it looks like it'll be some pretty interesting stuff from technologizer uh there's a story microsoft flight simulator it lives it was one of microsoft's oldest most loved applications and as of early 2009 it appeared to be dead meat I speak of Microsoft Flight Simulator, the author of the story, by the way, is Harry McCracken, which by Microsoft's much lauded 28 years ago, yeah, I date its er origins to an earlier non-Microsoft version called Sublogic Flight Simulator and therefore consider it to be 30 years old. Yes, it's been around that long, Microsoft Flight Simulator, his, I remember playing it, you know, when I was a kid. And to date myself, I'm 34. So, yeah, it's been around for a very long time. Anyway, there's a YouTube video that shows the preview. For those of you who want to see it, uh, you can either uh, visit my web, quicksurf my website, quicksurf.com, and I have everything linked up in the show notes. Um, I'm sure if you search for Microsoft Flight 2010, uh, you might find it that way too. So, but uh, the the video is embedded in the article at Technologizer. So, by all means, Technologizer.com. You can get it that way as well. So, uh, it looks pretty neat. Um, you know, we'll see what comes of it. They haven't really done anything really innovative with it for a really long time, which is why everybody considered it to be dead meat. And I'm I'm fairly certain sales have been pretty stagnated. But you know. That's how it is sometimes. That's how it is. From TechCrunch, there's a story here. Chrome Web Store slated for October launch. Google taking a mere 5% cut of revenue. Google's App Store for the web is almost ready for business. Gaming portal 1up.com has detailed a presentation given by Google developer advocates Mark DeLora and Michael Mahamoff at GDC Europe that contains new details about the Chrome Web Store, a feature first announced at Google I.O. that will allow users to purchase web applications from their Chrome web browsers. During their talk, the Google employees revealed that the Web Store is going to probably launch in October, and they gave more details on how the Web Store's payments would work. So pretty neat stuff. Um, if you're a Chrome user, this is worth checking out. Um, I'm curious. I'm personally, I don't use Chrome every day, even though I have it installed. But uh, I'm curious to see how the web store will work uh, in Chrome. If it's like Google Gears used to be, for those you know now defunct Google Gears, or if if they're using some other HTML5 driven you know application type thing, or if it's you know something else altogether. So I'm curious to see how it'll all work and you know how it. You know how you move applications between your various computers and that sort of thing so uh be pretty interesting to check out from cnetnews.com uh, yahoo mail gets ipad friendly web app yahoo has rejiggered its web email service to better fit within the confines of the ipad's plus size web browser users who visit yahoo's webmail service from their ipad will now get a version of the site that's been designed to fit within the ipad's user interface Yes, very nice. Now, if we can just do that for their mail, for like iPhones, that would be even better. Uh, 
The, this includes portrait and landscape support by scrolling up and down one's message list and messages themselves with acceleration. Uh, lots of bells and whistles. By all means, if you're a Yahoo Mail user, this is worth checking out. You get it automatically. So, uh, you know, ding, ding. Great job. That'll pretty much do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes. For you, those of you who are on YouTube, if you don't mind, please subscribe to my channel. Um, for those that are on Blip TV or, or if you want to go to my main website, I have subscription links there as well. So uh, by all means, check those out. Subscribe. That's how I pay my bills and keep the show going. And uh, with that... I will see all of you on the next episode. Follow me over at twitter.com slash Adrian underscore bacon, and I will see you then. Bye.